So great stories breathe, cliches suffocate. Cliches suffocate. They will suck the life out of your brand. Trust me, if you're using the same language, the same images, the same stuff, I don't care how great your brand or product is because you have failed to actually own that story and export it in a way that's going to be meaningful to me because you and me, we have more choices, we have more options, we are one Google search away from having thousands or hundreds of thousands of options to choose from. Which one are we going to choose? Which one is going to elevate above all the other noise? Because there's always going to be the noise. There's never going to be a shortage with regard to noise. So let's look at this. I put this together so you can really see. I want to have cliche clearly understood in your mind. This is vital. Okay, a phrase or opinion that is overused and betrays a lack of original thought. Betrays a lack of original thought. So if something isn't coming across as original, that means they've heard it before. And if you are the 25th or the 250th or the 1,000th time that they have heard best, greatest, most innovative, Or here's the great one, the next Uber of. I mean, give me a break. How many times can you hear the next Uber of? You know, and and think, you know, it's like it doesn't penetrate anymore. It has no meaning. It's, It's become too diluted. That's a cliche. Now, definition two, very predictable or unoriginal thing. Very predictable. They saw it coming. They expected. That's like when you say, why should, like you're pitching somebody, you say, why should you do business with us? Because we care. Because we have knowledgeable staff. I sure freaking hope so. You know, it's like, that's like saying, because we open at the hours that it says, you know, and we close at the hours that it says. You don't get rewarded for doing the ordinary. You don't get rewarded for doing the expected. And you don't get the reward for actually being just sort of one more player on the field. And I want you to notice what's on the bottom there. This applies, now oftentimes when I talk about cliches, people think to themselves, cliches, oh, okay, those are the phrases, those are the words. That's That's one part. One part. Your brand is multifaceted. Your brand has so many aspects to it. It's what people hear. It's what people feel. It's what people see. Now, here's the deal. I'm going to make a little confession. By the way, I'm just curious, how many people have been in the, in the industry uh, more than 10 years? Keep your hands raised. All right, now, keeping your hands raised, how many people in more than 20? Keep your hands raised. More than 30? I don't even know who the hell I'm talking to anymore. Oh, my gosh. Okay, here's the deal. I've, I've, it's like I know this is going to come as a shock. I've been doing this for 36 years. When I got in the industry, I hope you're sitting down, there was no freaking internet. You went into your office, and you could Google this. It's in the history. It's in the history archives. You can Google this. There's things called drawing boards, T-squares, triangles. We use things called rapidographs. I'm not making that up. I'm serious. This is not like some sci-fi thing. Rapidograph, you can look it up. I'm serious, rapidograph. We use the, anyway, so, so there was no social media. There wasn't anybody to share my story with. There wasn't any followers for me to check. If I actually wanted to meet an influencer, I had to do something revolutionary. I had to pick up the freaking phone. And for those of you, I mean, just based on the amount of hands raised, you may or may not know this, there were phones before, wait, well before there were smartphones, well before there was Siri, there was a phone that not only had buttons, there was a phone before that, it had a rotary dial. It was our form of entertainment. It was incredible. It was the, it was the first version. It was, it was YouTube version 1.0. You kind of watched the thing rotate back. It was awesome. Especially when you did nine. Because, oh, look at that. That was incredible, right? All right. So the thing is, 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 you know, the reason I tell you that little bit of history was back when 
when I was first designing brands, designing brochures and posters and all kinds of material for clients in New York City, I had to look through portfolios. I had to look through actual samples of work. I, it wasn't just a matter of looking for something online. Because what happened when the internet entered into our industry, here's what happened. All of a sudden, <clears throat> someone who was someone's secretary, who just was maybe typing something, all of a sudden, you are now the editor of our corporate, mag corporate newsletter, or you're now in charge of promotion because you can type. So they had no design skill, they had no understanding of marketing, no understanding of branding, etc. And then what happens is, they go online, and they find royalty-free artwork. And for, and for whatever reason, everybody picks the stupid smiling faces where someone, you know, it's like if they're selling a computer or some crap, right? So they go, it's like all of a sudden, everyone picks the, you know, or, or you're looking lovingly at it like it's a newborn. It's not a freaking newborn. It's a, it's a computer device. But everybody would do that with it. It's like, and so you got, there was a period, it was a very dark period in marketing and branding and, and brands overall where Everything looked a lot the same. And this thing called cliches reached its ultimate low point. Everybody was using the same crap, going to the same sources because they were doing the same, oh wow, all of a sudden they didn't have to make calls, they actually could do this thing online and now by today's standards it would be intolerable, but they could actually like, you know, type in a word and wait seven minutes for the research, for the search results to come back. That was dial up guys, that was dial up. Okay, so with this, if you're using cliches to promote your brand, you're promoting your category, not your brand. Now that was so good, I'm gonna show it to you again. It goes like this, if you're using cliches to promote your brand, you're promoting your category, not your brand. Now you wanna get that. If you are using the same language as all of your competitors, they're going to think of your industry. If you're going to say best of breed, if you're going to say next generation, if you're going to say the Uber of, and everybody else in your industry is saying the same stuff, thank you for promoting your industry. But they're not going to recognize you because you're not going to have a unique voice. You're not, you're not going to be recognized. You know, and this kind of stuff. It's like, why would I put my name at the bottom of here? Because there are people I, I already knew who are going to be like, wait a second, that's a pretty damn cool quote. I'm going to take a photograph of that and share it on social media. Yes, I'm a shameless promoter. Absolutely. But I'm owning it. I know it. It's like, this is an important thing. I have made companies millions of dollars with this one law alone. Every day. Millions of dollars are made by clients around the world applying just this. Every day, seven days a week. So, cliches are the enemy. Okay? It's not, if you're in sales, it's not the marketing, and if you're in marketing, it's not the sales, and it's like, the, enough of the baby crap, okay? You're not in a sandbox. That's just old school, stupid crap. That's not the way to grow a brand.